here we have a subsection 1.4.1 the existence of square roots first we have a theorem here which states that there exists a real number alpha element of r satisfying alpha square is equal to 2 so this indirectly says that root 2 is a real number there exists a real number alpha element of r satisfying alpha square is equal to 2. This indirectly says that root 2 exists and it is a real number. To prove this theorem, we define a new set here. So consider the set uh, t is equal to set of all t element of r says that t square is less than 2. So the set t consists of all the real numbers whose square is less than 2. Now we know that 1 square is 1 and this is less than 2. So 1 will be an element of set T. So we can say that the set T is non-empty. Now we can clearly see that this set T is bounded above because 2 is an upper bound for this set. So by the axiom of completeness as T is a non-empty and bounded above, T has a supremum and we call that supremum as alpha. So let alpha is equal to supremum of t. Now we will show that alpha is equal to root 2 or alpha square is equal to 2 by simply showing that alpha square cannot be less than 2 and alpha square cannot be greater than 2. First we will show that alpha square cannot be less than 2. For that we will start by assuming that alpha square is less than 2. Assume that alpha square less than 2. Now, alpha square less than 2 means by the definition of t we can see that alpha is an element of t. Now alpha was the supremum of t and we got that alpha is an element of t by this assumption. Now we will check that any element greater than alpha can be an element of t or not. For that we will take an element which is greater than alpha and check that whether it belongs to t or not. So we know that uh, alpha plus 1 by n is an element which is greater than alpha. Now I will check whether this element alpha plus 1 by n belongs to t or not by just squaring it and, whether, and checking whether the square of this is less than 2. If the square of alpha plus 1 by n is less than 2, we can say that alpha plus 1 by n is an element of t. So alpha plus 1 by n the whole square we know that it is alpha square plus 2 alpha by n plus 1 by n square. Now we know that n square is greater than or equal to n. So 1 by n square will always be less than or equal to 1 by n. So replacing 1 by n square with 1 by n we will get this is less than or equal to alpha square plus 2 alpha plus 1 by n square replaced with 1 by n. Now when you add both of this you will get 2 alpha plus 1 by n. Now again coming back to alpha square less than 2. Since alpha square is less than 2 we have 2 minus alpha square is greater than 0. Now by the Archimedean property as 2 minus alpha square is a real number which is greater than 0 there exists a natural number n such that 1 by n is less than 2 minus alpha square. Choose n to be a little bit larger so that instead of 1 by n we have 2 alpha plus 1 the whole divided by n is less than 2 minus alpha square. We can choose a n to be a little more larger than whatever we chosen here and let that uh, value of n be n naught. So we will choose the value of n naught in such a way that 2 alpha plus 1 by n naught is less than 2 minus alpha square. So if that happens from here we will get alpha plus replacing n with n0, alpha plus 1 by n0 the whole square will be less than from here not less than less than or equal to alpha square plus 2 alpha plus 1 by n0 and just we have assumed from here that 
we have chosen n naught in such a way that this is less than this quantity is less than 2 minus alpha square so this will be less than alpha square plus as this is less than 2 minus alpha square so alpha square and minus alpha square will delete to get you 2 so what you got is that alpha plus 1 by n naught the whole square is less than 2 so this means that alpha plus 1 by n naught is an element of t by the definition of t now alpha was the supremum of t that means the least upper bound of t so this means alpha is an upper bound so alpha is an upper bound means any element which is greater than alpha cannot be an element of t but here you got this element which is greater than alpha is an element of t and this is a contradiction to the fact that alpha is an upper bound. Hence, we can say that our assumption was wrong, alpha square less than 2 was wrong. So, this cannot happen, alpha square cannot be less than 2. Now, moving to our next case, alpha square greater than 2. So, we have to show that alpha square cannot be greater than 2 as well. So, we here assume that alpha square is greater than 2. Alpha square greater than 2 means alpha is an upper bound for the set t by the definition of t because t contains all the real numbers whose square is less than 2. Since alpha square is greater than 2, we can say that alpha is an upper bound for the set t. Now, to prove this is uh, wrong, what we do is that we will search for an upper bound of t which is smaller than alpha. So alpha minus 1 by n the whole square. Clearly alpha minus 1 by n is less than alpha because n is positive. Now alpha minus 1 by n the whole square equal to alpha square minus 2 alpha by n plus 1 by n square. Now if we, we know that 1 by n square is a, a positive quantity. So if we omit this 1 by n square, we can say that this quantity will be greater than alpha square minus 2 alpha by n. From here we had alpha square is less than 2. This means that alpha square minus 2 is greater than 0. So alpha square minus 2 is a real number which is greater than 0. By the Archimedean property, we can find a natural number n such that 1 by n is less than alpha square minus 2. We choose this n to be large enough so that 2 alpha by n is less than alpha square minus 2 and let this value of n be denoted as n naught. So n naught is a larger value of n such that 2 alpha by n naught is less than alpha square minus 2. From here we get 2 is less than alpha square minus 2 alpha by n naught or alpha square minus 2 alpha by n naught is greater than 2. Now we use this here so we will get alpha minus replacing n with n naught we will get alpha minus 1 by n naught the whole square is greater than alpha square minus 2 alpha by n naught and we know that this is greater than we got that alpha minus 1 by n naught the whole square is greater than 2. This means that alpha minus 1 by n naught is an upper bound for the set T by the definition of T. Now, since alpha is supremum of T, we have defined alpha to be supremum of T. Supremum of T means it is the least upper bound of T. Now what we have seen here is that we got a number which is less than alpha and it is an upper bound of t. This contradicts the fact that alpha is a least upper bound of t and our assumption alpha square greater than 2 is wrong. So alpha square greater than 2 cannot happen. Earlier we had shown that alpha square cannot be less than 2 and now we have shown that alpha square cannot be greater than 2 as well. So the only possibility is that alpha square is equal to 2. So you will get alpha equal to root 2 which exists in R. Why this exists in R? Because we have shown that alpha is supremum of T. So supremum of T 
will exist by the axiom of completeness. Now we have a remark here. So the same proof can be used to show that root x exists for any x greater than or equal to 0 just by modifying a little bit. Wherever you find 2, change it as x to show that root x exists for any x greater than or equal to 0. Now again, using the binomial formula for uh, alpha plus 1 by n, the whole raised to m. You know what is the binomial formula. Use that to show that mth root of x exists for any arbitrary values of m. Instead of using alpha plus 1 by n, the whole square, here using the binomial formula, we can expand alpha plus 1 by n, the whole raised to m, and change 2 to x so that mth root of x exists for any arbitrary value of m.